Good morning. Um, I have a few things to invite you to today. Um, first of all, Elko begins on Tuesday at 6.30 at St. Anne's. Um, and for many of us, this might be the first real invitation you've been received into Alpha. Um, Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and it means, so the beginning. And then we all need to go back to, what does it mean to be a Christian? If I was to answer that to somebody else, how would I say that? Why do we do what we do? And so Alpha is about a relationship with Jesus, about a relationship with our community. And it's something you can invite people to. Just invite with your friend to come for dinner. We're going to go out for dinner, watch a movie, no pressure. You're welcome to come on Tuesday and then decide if you want to come next week. So if you want to come, you can talk to me after Mass. We would love to have you. Um, we have a lot of great meals lined up. And if you have more questions, um, let me know. <coughs> also this week is the Wadena County Fair. And we have a Mary's ACC Fair booth. In the past, Father Aaron has spent sometimes like eight or ten hours a day at the fair. And he says he can't do that this year. His schedule is too full, and so he needs a little bit more help. And if you are able to take two hours, four hours, uh, I have a sign-up sheet in the back with me. Um, also, you'll notice we have Sister Obina with us, who is going to share about her life and her community's life, specifically with the missions. If you would like to see her more today, um, come and find me. She's staying with us, and we would love to help get you connected. Also, on beginning July 4th weekend, the parishes have a new mass schedule. This mass time does not, does not change, but it also when the bishop reinstates the obligation to attend mass. So remind your friends um, to come back. It might, might have been a while since they've been back. <laughs> um, next weekend, Deacon Jerry Snyder will be retiring from serving as a deacon for our parishes. You are invited to join us for a celebration at St. Anne's at noon on Sunday. Please rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We're now with our readings and, and how the Mass structure goes, we're now in ordinary time again. So you kind of jump right into the heart of Jesus' ministry. And he's telling parables about the kingdom of God, what God's kingdom is like. And it's a real challenge for us to try to imagine it knowing that we have all these other kingdoms that are living in our world that we are part of. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on the high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. 
and all the trees in the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yet, we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please Him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But his own disciples, to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, as Victoria mentioned in the beginning, we are very blessed to have Sister Obina Opala here today, who is going to be speaking to us after communion time. She's going to talk a little bit about the work of the, the Daughters of Mary, Mother of Mercy, and their community and the mission work that they do, taking care of orphans and uh, taking care of people and educating children. So, it's very good work, and I hope we can show our support of her today. Um, it, it brings to mind with with sister uh, being here from, she's from Nigeria. Nigeria is in Africa. Anybody know where Africa's at? Okay, good. Now, way to go, everybody. Pay any attention in geography class. I, I just think about uh, every weekend when we celebrate Mass, somebody put this in my head, just thinking about God's influence in the world. So if people in Australia and in Asia, they're the first ones to make it to Saturday night, Okay, And then it goes Saturday night all the way through the whole planet, and it's Sunday morning and Sunday day all the way through the whole planet, right? This is, you figure, you know how that works. Uh, and with Saturday night into Sunday morning, you have all of these people who are Catholics in every country. All, all countries of the world have Catholics hidden in there. And they're all going to Mass. Think of that, how Jesus has influenced Every part of the world, people are going to Mass today. And they're, they're experiencing Jesus coming down and being present on the altar. You, you saw how energetic I got last weekend about the body and blood of Jesus, how God's presence with us, the blood of Jesus, how utterly important that is. I mean, there are, there are parts of our world right now where in order to go to Mass, it's a crime. And it's life endangering. There are there are Catholics there are, are, who are trying to hide going to mass right now. It's been part of our history too. When we think of our ancestors, time periods where going to mass was life threatening, and so the priest looks just like everybody else, dresses like everybody else, doesn't carry his mass kit around or anything like that. He has to sneak into someone's barn or someone's house, or they go into the basement, or they sneak into some spot on Sunday. And they celebrate Mass in hiding, a small group of people. As you're going to hear from Sister, some of her own sisters, just yesterday, Sister was uh, checking her email as she was going, I'm stealing some of your thunder, sorry Sister. But just for us to be praying, some of her sisters yesterday have disappeared from her community. In the place where she's at in, in Nigeria, in that portion there right now, uh, the way things are with the government, we're not sure what's going to happen to those sisters. Because of their faith and because what they're doing of work and trying to help uh, part of the world uh, be Jesus 
for children that have no parents. People who are so sick or mentally uh, handicapped in ways that they can't take care of themselves, nobody else wants to take care of them or has the ability to take care of them. And so Christ in the church has been doing this mission all throughout the world. Slowly over time, Jesus has been changing the world soul by soul by soul by soul. Whoever wants to encounter him, he comes to them and, and gives them an opportunity to grow in relationship with him because of the spread of Christianity. Now, don't be confused by the fact that in the United States we see a decline of Catholicism. Because that's not what, that's not what is happening throughout the rest of the world. In Africa, in, in South America, Central America, in those territories where Christianity is just being introduced for the first time, Catholicism is exploding. It's exploding. There are more Catholics today than there ever have been in history. Now, we've been, we've been going as Christians, as Catholics, ever since the time of Jesus. Christianity has been spreading throughout the world slowly, slowly, slowly. And so that means every single generation has been impacted one way or the other by the church, impacted by Jesus entering into the world and changing us. Our ancestors who brought Catholicism into this area, there was no Catholicism here probably 200 years ago, huh? And then our ancestors moved into the town, and um, I haven't studied the books here, so I can't speak of the numbers in this building here, but I know at St. Anne's and at St. John's, um, if you look back into the 19 or to the late 1800s when the churches first got established in both of those communities, they had about 10 to 20 baptisms a year. Okay, and then by the 1940s, you have somewhere between 60 and 85 baptisms a year. Isn't that incredible? In each parish by itself. <laughs> And then now, it's back down to 20 to 10. <laughs> Just kind of heartbreaking a little bit. But don't, we shouldn't be confused about how Christ is changing the world. God chose in our history to enter into us as human beings and become a human being. And he quietly lived in a small town of Nazareth for many, many years. And nobody knew him. And then he started a three-year ministry... And he started changing people's lives. And then he died on the cross, and it just started exploding everywhere. Our faith, our, our Catholic faith, God wants to infiltrate like a spy. His kingdom is not like the kingdoms of this world. The, the people of his time period expected a Messiah to show up to overthrow the government. And in some respects, we might be thinking that to ourselves. Well, if, if we could just get the whole nation to be Catholic all at once, we'd have to take over the government, we'd have to take over this, take over that, you know, in order to do that. That's not what Jesus did. His goal was not to take over the civil society in that kind of a way where we're running all the government programs and running all of that stuff. No, his goal is to meet every single soul and provide to them the opportunity to be saved by him. And to grow in a relationship. So we treasure our faith. And we understand that God calls us as we go to Mass every single weekend. We're here to keep learning something about who God is. And to allow my life to be transformed by Him. To take it very personally. God, you love me. You want my life to be changed and to be different. Just think of what's about to happen here, the mystery, in just a few moments we'll be celebrating the Eucharist. And in of all places in the whole wide world, you could go to, to, uh, to Australia, you can go to Japan, you can go to Thailand, you can go to Pakistan, you can go to uh, Russia, you can go to any number of the countries in Europe, Spain, Australia, you can go into North Africa, East Africa, South Africa, you go into South America, you can go into Central America, you can go even to Canada. And Catholicism is everywhere. But of all of the places Jesus is going to show up, right here, today, the privilege that we have of encountering Jesus and 
And for us to have an ownership of that on a personal level where we say, thank you, Jesus, for coming and visiting me, being with me. Uh, the story of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I know Sister does this kind of work already. She probably has heard this, I don't know how many times, and I'm not going to steal any more of your stories, okay? But Mother Teresa of Calcutta, uh, one day she had... She, this man was dying in the street because people didn't, they didn't have the resources to take care of him. They didn't have nursing home or hospital space. So she saw him laying in the street, dying in his own filth, blood and everything else all over his body from laying there for however long. She goes and she finds him. She picks him up and she brings him to her home. She has nowhere else to take him. Bring him to her home. Uh, bathes him and, and showers him, gets him all cleaned up, another puts some fresh clothes onto him, lays him into her bed, and he is fighting her every step of the way. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. What's your problem? Why are you doing this? And finally, as she, she finished everything up, and he's just crying, he's weeping, and he's so frustrated, and he says to her, why are you doing this? And she says, I will not let my Jesus die in the street. I will not let my Jesus die in the street. She gets it. God wants to encounter every person and show them that they have dignity and love. And that's what he's trying to do for you. Don't leave church today without opening yourself up to being loved by God today because he's coming this close. His kingdom is like a mustard seed. Planted in the ground? How does it grow? We don't know. But there it is. It starts growing. Suddenly it becomes this place of refuge that people from anywhere around this area that want to encounter Jesus can come here to our Catholic Church and meet Jesus. And that's what he's here to do to you for you today. page 9 in the Missal that if you need it, but the creed that we recite is one that's been recited by Christians ever since the 300s, and uh, in, when they did the Council of Nicaea in 325, that's when they created this, and this text that we use, it's like renewing our baptismal promises. People have died over this text and believing in what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy 
prayers before our Heavenly Father. For the growing church on earth, that it may welcome and redeem the cultures and values of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders whose plans influence the economy, that they may encourage and support farmers and all who help to bring food to our table. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those who develop the land, that as they make this earth more productive, so may they revere the natural environment and created by God. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For students and teachers finishing the school year, that prayer, Eucharist, and charity remain on their schedule throughout the summer. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For those oppressed by any kind of need, that the Lord graciously grant them relief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, that they may live forever in the courts of our God, especially Ryan Polovich, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray also for the mission that the daughters of Mary, Mother of Mercy, do throughout the world, all the people whose lives are impacted by the work that they do. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we are so grateful that your attention for us comes all the way into this room today, that we can encounter your Son, Jesus, living and resurrected in the Holy Eucharist, and our lives, too, can be changed like all of those who have gone before us. We ask that you would hear all of these prayers. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery he accomplished the marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Cloud, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you can bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I'd like to uh, have you seated for a moment, and we'll welcome up Sister Obina Opala. Who's, again, her sisters are from Nigeria. She's living in Texas. Right now she's living in Texas, but um, she's got a house there of, I think, five or six sisters. Yeah, and she's the mother of that house. Okay, so she knows <laughs> she knows what we are like as human beings. And so she's going to speak a little bit about her mission, and at the end of that, we're going to then do a, a second collection of today in order to be able to raise funds for their mission. Don't worry, uh, uh, we'll collect all the money and then write a check and send it over to them. Sister won't go home with a big bag of money um, uh, all by herself, but she'll get some money from us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I woke up this morning with mixed feelings, but I think I'm much better. Guess why? Today is the first time since one year and a half I'm drinking from the chalice. I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe nobody's here with the mask. I have thrown mine away. So I am so. It's different here. Thank you for your faith. My name is Sister Obino Bala. I am from Nigeria. And uh, I am the mission coordinator for my order, which is Daughters of Mary, Mother of Mercy. I have been a nun for 28 years. I was a, became a nun at age 20. So, um, before I proceed, I want to thank Father Aaron in a special way. It still amazed me that he had to drive more than two hours and have to pick me up from the airport yesterday. I didn't realize that the airport is too far away from where he lives. That means a lot for me. It's a huge sacrifice. You know, I mean, he could have said, you pick a taxi or you find your way, and that's the way it should be. But he didn't want me to go through that. And that tells me that we can always help each other. My convent where I live is 30 minutes, two convents, the domestic one and the international one. The domestic one is 30 minutes away from me, and the other one is 40 minutes away from us. And once in a while, when some sisters are visiting, I'm like, it's too far away. I'm gonna send you somebody to pick you up. But you know what? I quit doing that from yesterday. Even if they arrive middle of the night, I will be picking them up. Father has come. <laughs> so, anyway, um, like I said, I am the mission coordinator for my order. Every summer, June, July, August, I go around the states. Uh, different parishes or dioceses that they invite us to talk about uh, mission and work. This is what we do. We have thousands of orphans that are dependent on us. And we have thousands of mentally challenged people, both children and adults, who are also dependent on us. And we have a lot of free schools that we run to give these orphans uh, basic human needs. That would be education, um, roof over their head, and food. And the challenging part of it is that most times we do not have the resources to meet the requirements, uh, to meet the needs of these kids that and the poorest of the poor that we minister to. Um, some of you might know there is, there is a lot going on right now in Nigeria, especially in the south side where I come from. Um, because of poverty, some older men take advantage of kids. I call them kids because they are under 16. They will impregnate them and when this happens, the family will throw them away because they don't want to end up with the stigma that they are 
uh, married children uh, um, are pregnant. So what do these kids do? For those of them who manage to come to us that we rescue, we have to keep them until they deliver these babies and then we we'll keep them and their babies and take care of them. And some of them we hide to a very far away place and when they have these kids, what do they do? They will put these babies in boxes. Either bring them to our doorsteps or put them very close to a dumpster so when somebody sees, sometimes we don't see all of that. Sometimes these kids die, but most times we see them and we take these kids to our orphanages. And it might interest you to know that I was home last year to supervise what is going on and make sure that the resources we get are used appropriately. And on my way coming back to our mother house, I saw two boxes right in front of our gate. And I almost passed that. But then it rang bell on me. Why don't you look inside these two boxes? I did. And they were babies. So I had to send for the matron of the orphanage who came with other sisters and we picked these babies. This is kind of how we rescue babies that we keep in our orphanages. And we raise funds to make sure that these kids, they get basic human needs, which is food, shelter, education, and we try to give them quality of life so they will not feel different life. They're different from other kids. So um, we have different ministries and missions all over the world. In Africa, we have missions in Nigeria, in Ghana, Lesotho, South Africa, and Cameroon. And in Europe, we have uh, missions in Germany, Austria, Sweden, Italy, Ireland, and England. In the North America, we have missions in the United States of America and in Canada. So, um, my goal this year is to try and make sure that at least some of our orphanages have clean water. Because what we do is if they're six or seven years of age, then they're able to carry a little bucket on their head as much as they can carry, and we all will go to the stream and fetch water that they can drink. So my mission this year is to provide them with a well which will serve uh, clean water for them. And to get a well will cost us at least 5,000 of US dollars it will provide wells for at least five orphanages. And then there are some of our uh, clinics, that their roofs are fully blown away and they are shut down. And it will cost at least 7,000 US dollar to fix those. So when I am given the opportunity to talk about a mission and what we do, I try to talk people to help us so we'll be able to help this poorest of the poor that we serve. One of the things I find hard in my job is to beg. It's very hard to beg. But what really motivates me is when I know that I'm not begging for myself. I am begging for these kids who are not able to help themselves, except we do. And the joy of it is that we have watched some of them that we helped from infants to the adults, and they are independent, and they are living healthy lifestyle. They can afford to be on their own. So that's the joy of it. I am pleading with you today to please support our mission and what we do so we'll be able to help these people. As I speak with you right now, there is a genocide going on in Nigeria. That's why I said I woke up with mixed feelings. Um, my, my family woke me up like 3 a.m. in the middle of the night because I've been trying to reach them yesterday. Uh, they're not reachable. And when they call me, I'm like, are you okay? No, they are not. They gathered in the war room, they are praying, they are believing God, they're shooting all over the place. I'm like, 
We are young people in one place and they said so they can die together. So I have brought some rosaries, they are back there. I know all of you have rosary, but I am pleading with you to take one and offer that rosary for our country, Nigeria, so that a lady will intervene in our cases. So I am just asking you to please help our mission. Thank you very much and God bless you. go around and again they'll be uh, collecting money for sisters mission and for the orphanages and th they have those projects they're trying to gain um, water for the wells that they're trying to build and they're trying to uh, make sure that the facilities have good roofing roofs and uh, all, the, all of their facilities are well taken care of thousands of kids that they're taking care of huh? and, and how this works is we collect the money as a parish and then we write a check through the mission office with the diocese, and then it's sent off to sister and the missions over there, so it's safely taken care of from one place to the other. <clears throat> sister, um, yeah, we will be praying for you, okay? It's very hard. It gets very personal when suddenly it's your own family and when it's your friends and the, the other sisters of the community who are at risk with their lives and their faith on a day-to-day -day basis. After Mass, I'll be outside shaking hands for those um, for all those who would like to do that. And then uh, I'm also available if anyone would like to pray at all after Mass. I'll be out there. If you have some joy that you're celebrating, maybe a birthday or an anniversary or anything like that, just stop. And uh, after the big wine is gone done, then maybe just hang out at the end and we'll, we'll pray together out there, whoever would like to do that. We are hiring a few different positions across the area Catholic community so that you can know about that. We have a business administrator for the whole area Catholic community. That position is a full-time position, um, administrating all eight of the parishes together to help me and Father Gabriel with that. And then we also have two, what used to be the faith formation positions, but we're calling them director of discipleship. So each parish will still have its own individual director of discipleship. And then we have two people, a full-time and a part-time, that will be working together across all eight of the parishes to help unite some of our programming together. So um, full-time and a part-time discipleship director positions available. There's also the, the, the site position available in Verndale and over in uh, Bluegrass, those two positions as well. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.
There's one person right now. Thank you.